Alright, this is Colton from WhiplashPC.com. Today we have the Noctua NHD14. This is by far, I think hands down, the best processor cooler you can get. It competes with the water cooling actually, believe it or not. Some people actually say they've used this and changed from water cooling to this and they have had a great result. I am not kidding, this is by far the best cooler on the market. I think you can ask anybody. Of course, there's always going to be opinions saying, oh, mine's better, but uh, I mean, honestly, if you go look at any chart, this thing will be anything, hands down. This is the Noctua HD, or NH D104, um, D14, I should say. I get a little too carried away sometimes, but uh, this is very good. Let's go ahead and open it up. It's got a 140mm fan, which heads down below it. I'll kind of show you that in a second. And it also has a 120. The 140 will level to the 120, so you're not going to have an issue fitting it in your case. This thing should be huge. I haven't seen one personally yet, but I've been looking at the benchmarks. And this is basically the Cadillac cooler of them all. And here, it gives us the installation manual. I'm not going to go through that. I'll kind of get an idea out of there. But here's the installation brackets. I'll give you the, all the capable information of what it's capable of for support for socket types, AM3, 775 and all that. I'm going to look at that here in a second and see what it's capable of, which will tell me. It definitely supports uh, 1155 series and tells, so that's all that really matters to me, but I'm going to try to get the information. It comes with a Noctua case, pa a case badge, that's hard to say. Um, thermal paste, fan connectors, all that. It comes with like a screwdriver here as you can kind of see. Phillips and the little twisting thing. It's probably going to be screwed on. Alright, on to the cooler itself probably. And it comes with a big piece of cardboard. I'm trying to get it all out here for you. It feels heavy. It's very well built, obviously. Yeah, it's big. I can see a little bit of it already. Oh my gosh. This thing is a monster. And that's a good thing, I think. If I can ever get it out of this box without breaking it. Wow, it feels like it's going to cut my hand. I think I'd be alright with it. Oh my gosh, would you look at that. <laughs> look how big that thing is. It is the Noctua NHD104. Or 14. Why do I keep saying no? I don't know why. It's a 14. It says Noctua on here. It is a 140mm fan here. As I said before, it levels out. I'm going to try to show you. See how the fan goes down here? And the other fan's up here. This is a 120, this is a 140. So the 140 levels out to the 120 as you can see up here. So it's completely smooth. So it's going to fit in your case without any issues. On the bottom side, it's just completely... I'm not sure what kind of... I think it's probably aluminum. But uh, big fans here. Huge cooler. It's like basically two coolers in one. If you've ever had a Exigma Tech or something, this is basically like two coolers in one. Heat pipes are absolutely amazing. There's about one, two, three, four, five, six on each side. Six there, six here. It's going to bolt on with screws. It's got the fan design. Oh my gosh, this thing's awesome. And we got three, three, two pins here, so you're going to plug that in. Uh, the fans look like they could come off if you wanted them to, but you're obviously not going to want them to come off. The Noctua NHD14. Let's go ahead and do some testing. It says it supports uh, the AMD. I'm going to go ahead and try to find out what it supports quick for you. Alright, I went ahead and looked and seen what it supports. It supports AMD, socket AM2, AM2+, AM3, and AM3+. For Intel, it supports LGA1366, 1156, 1155, and socket 775. I hope this helps. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run some tests now, and let's see what we got. Just wanted to make a video update along this. I got the backplate installed on that now, and this is the instruction manual. It's very well built. This is for the Intel instructions. They also have an AMD set instructions on this one. Um, shows you how to install it. That's how I have it installed. Let me go ahead and rotate this around and show you. As you can see, it got all the four prongs up and the spacers, spacers on now. It goes right around the back side and goes straight through the holes. It will say LGA 775, 1366, and 1155. Um, on the back, you can just see it goes through. It goes around the existing backplate. This isn't really a backplate. That's just a holder of the CPU. Very nice, though. Very well built. Solid. Good to go. Let's go to the next part. All right, now we have the bars aligned. This is where the processor is going to lay in the middle of the heat pipe. As you can see, these things just snow on. They're not really bolted on yet. This is a 2600K processor, uh, along with the Maximus Extreme Z ASUS motherboard. Let's go ahead and go to the next part.
All right, now I have this screwed on. This thing's bolted on, good to go. Got the thermal paste applied. It's probably a little heavy, but we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down and then pull it up and see where we're at. All right, so it's successfully on now. You can bolt them in down there. I'll try to zoom in on it. It just bolts on until it's tight. RAM is an issue on this. Obviously, we're blocking the RAM spot. And it looks like a lot of space, but uh, if you have RAM like this, you're going to be like, uh, uh, yeah, that's just not going to happen. So you only have basically two slots you can use. I'm trying to try to give you an angle, see where it's kind of blocking off there. Um, don't even think we're going to be able to get a RAM piece into the third slot there. If you start from one, two, three, four is blocked off, and definitely you're never going to be able to get anything in that, at least on this motherboard. Uh, there's really not a whole other, a lot of other ways you can apply it. I've tried putting it in sideways. It still didn't work. So what I'm going to do is the fan's going to go this way. And if you have a fan on the top of your case, it's just going to go completely out of there. And uh, should be good to go. Okay, now i got it up and running. What I was able to do, I was able to take the heat shields off the other two RAMs. You can kind of, the other two memory, sticks of memory I should say. And I try to get up there. See, as you can see, it's the same RAM. But I took the shields off and I was able to get it behind there. That actually worked out pretty well. Uh, so it's up and running. It's huge, as you can see. It's almost eating my video card, but it's working well. It's cooling. I'm going to go ahead and show you the t scores now and the temperature of it. This is for the Noctua cooler. Uh, this is going to be the test. I'm trying to hold it still and move my mouse at the same time. I'm using an Intel burn test on it. This is one of the best tools, basically, that you can run on a processor to make sure it's running properly. It's better than Prime95 because... Uh, it uses a different mode of testing. Basically, the test that they do at the actual Intel factories, what I've heard, uh, this runs on AMD processors also. It uses a different kind of uh, testing method than the Prime95. Uh, people said they've ran Intel burn test and found errors from Prime95 within five minutes when they ran Prime95 for 24 hours and didn't have anything. So if you're overclocking or simply want to test your processor to make sure it's fine, Intel burn test, definitely. Google it, download it, try it. It's free, completely free, and you'd be good to go. Okay, over here, this is the temperatures right now. 24C, this is idle. 38C is the highest we've got, so we're going to go ahead and start this up. What it does, it basically uses the available RAM, which I have 16 gigs right now. I'm going to try to get it up here so for you. And it takes about a gig away every few seconds or so. It starts using it and using it. Well, that's testing. Our processor is at 100% over here, and the temperatures are still pretty decent right now, 48C, 49C. I'm running on one fan right now. I took the other one off, and I just have the middle fan on the Noctua. I'll show you how that looks. It's just, just like that, because I didn't want to run into space issues on the top, because I could be hitting wires on the top, and it was real loud on the bottom because it was touching the video card. But it's running just fine. Um, knock about three to four degrees Celsius off of it if you have two fans on it. So if it's 47, knock about three off of there. So that's where you'd be a bit. Um, but as you can see, I'm not sure why it's kind of running down there now. The load's not at 100%. Um, I think I had the thread, set the threads to eight because it does have eight threads. I didn't set the threads on that, but um, the highest we got when it was running at 100% was 53C, 54C. And as I said, I didn't set the threads, so the load's not gonna be at 100%. Up here is where you set the threads. I forgot to do that. Overall, it's running great. Great cooler. I love it. It's a little big, and I've ran into some issues. If you're looking for a smaller cooler, I'd recommend the Exigma Tech. Uh, you can Google that, Newegg that, whatever you want to do. Um, there's another place uh, that I recommend is Cooler Master. They have a 212 cooler. That's a pretty decent cooler. Bolts on easily. Works well. Supports two fans if you want it to. It's not too big. It's not too small, but it works well. This is the Noctua cooler. I really do like it. If you have the space for it, I definitely recommend it. But if you're running low on space and you're going to be using it all the time, um, you may want to look at something else because this is rather large, as you've seen. Thanks for viewing. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know and I'll try to get back with you. And be sure to subscribe. Thank you. Thanks for viewing this video. If you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you thumbs up and subscribed. Thanks for viewing.